Hi guys, it's Lynn with Curiosity Crochet. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy and happy. Um, today I, and I'm way behind on videos, you guys. I'm so sorry. I just have not, uh, it's been crazy with everyone home and everybody on top of each other. And it's kind of hard to come up with something. And But I've been working on this towel and I figured why not share it with you guys. So... I can't get the whole thing in the camera uh, view, but, um, and it looks like a mess right now because it is not complete. I just made the big piece and then we're going to put a border around it together and we're going to bring this top part in and have like a strap that can hang on your stove or wherever you want to hang it from. Um, I use, now I always suggest for kitchen items using cotton because it just it, it holds up so much better for kitchen items but um again it stuff like this is totally up to you whatever your best judgment call is whatever you want to use i just suggest using cotton now i got this yarn here for a specific project that i made for my sister-in-law and i had all kinds left over so i was like you know what i'm gonna throw a towel together for a video this is Hirschner's Heritage Cotton. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, any of them, you know how much I love Hirschner's. But this was the first time I tried this cotton, and I love it. It's not real stiff like uh, peaches and cream or sugars and cream, and it's got a real nice soft texture to it. It's very, I like it a lot. Like, you could probably make garments out of this stuff. It's just that it comes in small packages like most cottons do so there's 112 yards per skein of their um off colors because like their their main colors like this have 164 yards in them now i went through almost all of the white but i like i said i used some of it on coasters that i made my sister-in-law so but you can tell there's mostly you know like there's other colors in here but I used a lot of white, and this is what I was left with. And I'm not going to use white anymore, so that's it. But now you can make this towel one solid color. You can make it just two colors. You can do like I did and use four colors. It's just that this is what I had, and the colors go together real nice, so I just through this together now when I show you because I'm gonna do on a small scale I'm gonna show you the stitch pattern that I used for the big piece um, I'll show you that on a small scale and then I'll tell you what I did color wise at the end of that and you can decide how you want to do it now I have a lot of ends to sew in uh, because of the color changing and stuff like that um, I kept the white attached the whole time. That's why I have these here. Um, but we're going to put a border around it anyway, so it'll cover all that. You won't even see it. And I'm probably going to just crochet around all these ends, too, while I'm doing the border. So then that way I don't have to sew them all in because I think that's the worst part of crocheting. I mean, would you agree or what? So... Oh, and the recommended hook size is five and a half, but I used a five just so that it was, I don't know if you guys can see that. These are pretty dark and I can't even get it to focus on it, but it, I used a five millimeter um, just to keep the stitches nice and tight. And um, is there anything else? Uh, for the, you know, for the colors mixed in with the white, I didn't use much. I still have quite a bit left of these still. And I'm going to use one for the border. I'm going to use this color. So, basically, the last color you end off with up here is what you'll probably use as your border because then you don't have to disconnect it when you switch to your last couple rows of white or whatever colors you're using it just makes it easier but again you can do it however you want to so and then I'm going to use this pink and gray to do the top part with 
And I'll go over all that when we get there, but just, um, just like a heads up, like what we're going to do after we put the border all the way around. Oh, I was trying to make it focus and it moved on me. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> I'm such a hot mess. I don't know. Okay, so anyways, after we put the border around the whole thing, then what we're going to do is we're going to slowly bring... You know, we're going to do decreases on each end and bring it in so that, and it should bring it so that this folds a little bit, like it'll pull it in and then we'll have a handle and I haven't decided just how long we're going to make it or not. Oh, and you're going to want a button and it can be any size button that you want it to be. It's just going to go on the handle part so that you can put it around wherever you want to put it. Um... And I'll show you the different, you know, I'll tell you when we get there for the buttonhole, like how big your button is based on, you know, like how many chains to leave open to leave the buttonhole, depending on what size your button is. Okay, now that I stumbled over all that, I just wanted to give you a quick heads up of what we're doing here. So, and this works up pretty quick. It's just that I didn't, I haven't had the time to just sit and crochet and get things done quickly like I'm used to because things are so different and I know y'all know what I'm talking about so that's what I, and you need scissors and a tapestry needle of course for you know cutting off and sewing in and all that good stuff but for um for the tutorial I'm just gonna use this is cotton too it's another Hirschner's one. I, I did an unboxing with this one. It's thicker. It's a it's a five weight cotton, but the color is good for on camera. And I'm gonna use a bigger hook, but I'm just showing you the stitch pattern. And then I'm gonna tell you the colors and then you can go. So I just wanted to show you that I'm using something different for um, showing you guys. But let's all get set up, get ready, get everything put together and we'll meet back up and I'll show you the stitch. Okay, once you get all your stuff put together and you've decided on what colors you want to use and whatnot. Now, if you're just using two colors, if you're just using one, you're just going to make a bunch of rows until you get it to a certain height. I'm going to, what did I get on myself? Look at, you guys, I, ju I just took a shower and I got stuff all over me and I don't even know where it came from. Well... It is literally everywhere. Oh, oh my word. Anyways, um, if you're using one color, you're just going to make a bunch of rows. If you're using two colors, I would suggest doing your main color up to a certain point and then doing the second color like in the middle and then doing that main color on top. Or another way to do two colors is do a little bit on the bottom, make a few rows of the secondary color um, do more of the main color, do that same amount of number of rows towards the top, and then finish it off with that main color. It's another way to do it too. Um, <clears throat> three colors, you could probably do the main color, one color, um, you know, a few rows of the main color, do a couple rows of the one color, um, do more of the main do your third color in the middle, do f more of the main, and then the same amount of rows of that other, the first color you used, and then the main color. So that's three. And then the way I used four colors was I had white as my main, so I started a few rows with that. And then I did a couple rows of one color. I went back to the main for a couple rows. I did the third color for a couple rows, and then I did, um, like, uh, I think I did six rows. So I started with three rows of the main color because the first row is all double crochet, and you'll see when I start it. So you're going to do the first initial row, which really doesn't count, and then two rows of the stitch in that main color, and then I did two rows of the second color. I went back and did two more rows of the white, and then I did two rows of the third color. I did six rows of the white. I did six rows of the fourth color. 
I did six more rows of white. Then I did the two rows of the third color I used. And then two rows of white. And then two rows of the second color I used. And then two rows of white. And that's where I ended. Um to start video, to start recording the video. And then, like I said, we'll do the border and we'll bring the top in together. So, um, that being said, you can do it however you want to, though. I just wanted to tell you how I did it. Um, so I hope I explained that good enough that you can follow along. So basically, it's, it's three rows, two, 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 six, 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 two, 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 and two. So, it, well, two, two, and two, I think, because you're doing, no, it's four, because you're doing white in the middle, so it's two, 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 and two, and then you'll stop. But that's only if you're using four colors. So, like I said, however you want to do it, I'm just going to show you the stitch pattern, and I let you know how I did mine. And, um, and any colors, obviously. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a slip knot on our hook. Okay. And we are going to chain even numbers. Any even number will work. Um, I started with 48. So you could do like 48 or 50. It'll give you wide enough, especially if you're using a four weight cotton. It should turn out pretty much the same that mine did so between 48 and 50 is where you really want to start um if you want it to be a thinner towel um and you don't want to do the top part you can do you know less chains if you prefer it to be a little longer you can do more chains so i'm just gonna do 12 Okay, so I've got 12 chains. Now what we're going to do, now I, I like working in the back loops. You don't have to, but I just prefer it because it leaves a cleaner edge. So, and the back loop is just, if you're looking at it front way this way and you turn it this way, there is a back bump on each chain and that's the third loop. So that's what I like working into. So what you're going to do is you're going to skip the first two chains. So here's our first one, second, and you're going to put a double crochet in the third. And then for this first row, you're just going to put one double crochet in each stitch all the way across. This is such a bulky cotton. Like, I have another cotton from Lion Brand that is a five weight, and it's not even this bulky. I've never seen a cotton this bulky, <laughs> to be completely honest. I mean, it's not a bad yarn. It's just not one of my favorites. So, I have I have some yarn that I, I let it sit there, and I use it for, you know, making videos with you guys and stuff like that. Especially if it's a good color that shows up. And I moved this camera so out of whack that now I have to sit weird. I'm going to have to fix this. Yes, I am. Okay, so when you get to the end, you're still going to just put your one double crochet in that last stitch. I got to fix this camera, you guys. Hold on. Okay, yay. I'm in a better position, but now you can see my phone stand. This is great. <laughs> but anyways... Someday I'll have a really great setup and my videos will be amazing and, you know, I can just, just sit here and be patient. Just sit here and be patient until things go my way. <laughs> but anyways, once you get your row of double crochet done, you're going to chain two. You're always going to chain two and the row is actually a one row repeat because you're just going to keep doing the same thing. But I'll show you what I mean. So what we're going to do now is... Um, your chain two counts as this double crochet here, this first one in the row. So we're going to jump to this next one here. We're going to jump to this next one and we're going to do a front post double crochet. So we're going to yarn over and we're going to go in 
to the side here and go underneath that post and come out the other side, we're going to grab the, the yarn, grab a loop, and then finish our double crochet. Okay, so that's a front post. Now I feel like it's way too far away from my hands. Hold on, guys. This is terrible today. Okay, now in the next one, the, we're working with posts for this whole thing, okay? So around this next post, we're going to do a back post. Now that you're going to yarn over. And instead of going in this way, we're going to come, we're going to put our hook behind it and come up through that hole. So it's the same hole you came out of from the last one. Now you're going in from the back and then you're going to go around that post and, and make sure that it's, that your hook is sitting on top of that post now. So looking at it this way, you're going through it like that. And then you're going to grab a loop and finish your double crochet. Okay. And then we're going to do a front post and that's what we're going to repeat. We're going to do front post, back post all the way across. So there's our front post. And now we're going to do the back post, which is yarning over and coming up from behind, going around that post, grabbing a loop and finishing our double crochet. And then just keep repeating that front post and back post. Well, if I could grab the yarn front post back post now when you come up to the end of your row you're gonna have one stitch left and your chain two we're gonna always end on a front post double crochet and then we're going to find the top of that chain two. So here's chain one, here's chain two, and we're gonna put a double crochet in there. So you'll always end with a double crochet in your chain two. So you'll end with a front post and a double crochet. That's how you'll always end. And we're gonna chain two, and we're gonna turn and now this is what I mean about it. it's going to be one row repeat. We're doing exactly the same thing. We're not working back post, front post. We're actually going to keep doing the front post, back post. So you're going to always be opposite of what it is. So this is a back post right here because you can see it sitting in the back. But we're going to do a front post around. We're going to be rebels and we're going to do opposite of it. So that's your front post, and then you do back post around the next one. But don't get it stuck like me, because I'm just special like that. <laughs> and then you just repeat that. You go front post around the back post, and then you've got a front post here. You're going to do a back post around the front post. So you're always just working opposite of what it is. and But it's always going to be the same. You're always going to start with a front post, a front post, back post, front post, back post. That's how it's always going to start. Did I just do that back? No, I thought I did it backwards because I was talking. So you just do it all the way down to the end. And you'll have this last back post down here and you'll put your last front post so see we're ending with a front post and then we're going to put a double crochet in that last chain two so then you'll get this kind of cool reversible pattern instead of it all being you know universal it lays really cool it really does it lays real cool. So I'll, sh I'll start this again with you. Chain two and turn. And then like I said, you'll always start with a front post. It's always going to be the same. You'll always start with a front post. 
and then you'll do your back post. And you'll just keep repeating that all the way down. Front post, back post, front post, back post. And if you have to put it down or you forget where you're at, just remember, you're always going to do opposite of what it is. So if it's a back post where it's sitting behind the stitches, you're going to put a front post. If it's a front post sitting on top, you're going to do a back post. And that's all you have to remember is going back and forth like that. And you're going to do that for as many rows as you want. Now, if you're doing it like me, I told you the amount of rows. So it's three, let me look at it. It's three, two, two, two. And then it's six, six and six. And then it's two, 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 two. That's how I did mine, how many rows I did. Now, let me measure it real quick so I can let you guys know. Hold on one second. My light just went out. What in the world? Hold on, guys. Okay, sorry about that, guys. For some reason, my uh, power brick thing that all, all my stuff is plugged into just decided to die. So I had to refinagle some stuff. So I apologize for that. But anyways, I measured this and it's about 13 inches long. So you can make it, you know, anywhere between 12 and 15 inches long and it would still be, it's going to be a pretty long towel. I wanted it to be though, um, just because of, I wanted to use some of this yarn up and, and I still have a ton left. So <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest. Maybe dishcloths to match the towel. I don't know. But so go ahead and work that up. Just repeating that same row over and over again it just gives this cool look i like the way that this turns out it looks real it looks real neat and it makes a nice heavy towel so like i said you don't even have to add the top part you could just put a border on it and leave this as a dish towel um because it's made out of cotton it makes a real nice dish towel and this is a nice heavy stitch too so it's a nice heavy nice towel but go ahead and work that up. I'm going to get resituated again and then we'll meet back and we'll put the border on and we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm smart. I counted, but I <laughs> discovered, so I did 35 rows in total is what I did with the three, two, 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 six, 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 two, 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 two. It was 35 rows. Um, so even if you're doing it solid, now you could do anywhere from probably 25 to the 35 rows. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be as long as mine. I just, like I said, I wanted to use up some of this yarn and I wanted to make it kind of different, kind of long, kind of cool looking. So, um, once you get your amount of rows done that you want... We are going to do a border around this baby. Now, if you have all the ends like I do, you can try and crochet them in. And then make sure you're getting over your end, you know, these things here from pulling colors up and stuff. So what we're going to do, and we're going down the side here, we're going to find spots and we are going to go in and do single crochets. If I can pull the yarn through, we're going to. Oh, you want to chain one here first. So after you bring your other color in, chain one. And then just, we're just going to put single crochets around the whole thing for now. And you just want to evenly space your single crochets out. Anywhere you see fit that you want to throw one in there. And just make sure it's evenly spaced out. You know, and trying to crochet your ends in too. It'll help a lot because then you don't have to sew them all in. Right? Right. It's my favorite part. Is being able 
to crochet these ends in and not having to worry about sewing them in. It's my favorite part about crochet is that you can do that. Well, it's one of my favorite parts because I love crochet, period. But we're going to do this all the way down this long side here. Just finding a spot and putting single crochets in. Going around everything and closing all this off. Making it pity. Making it real pity. I just want to get down the side here with you because I want to show you the corners and then I'm going to let you or show you what to do in the corners. So excuse me while I get down the side here. You can fast forward me if you want to and just get to the corner part. These, these are starting to crochet in. And you might have some little ends that you need to cut off um, here and there. But it's looking pretty good here. I didn't hold on to that one real good. But to this one here. But it's in there good enough. I made this towel nice and big and now I'm struggling to hold on to it <laughs> and it keeps sliding off my table here and my table isn't all that big so it's not saying much okay I'm starting to have issues with these ends here Get that white one out of the way. We're getting there. We're getting there. I'm going to take a, a minute here to say I hope you guys are doing all right during all this coronavirus mess. I hope you guys are finding ways to stay busy and stay healthy. Here in Illinois, we have to wear masks um, when we go anywhere. Can't even enter a building without a mask. They, they have people standing at the doors watching. So, uh, and masks just make my face sweat. So, <laughs> I try not to go many places. I, I had to go back to work a little bit, but it's not, it's not that much. And I have to wear my mask there, too. So, I am just trying to make the best of the situation. Staying positive, staying happy. You know, I, I, I try to look at the positives of everything. And here's my positive. My husband works nights. So, I don't get to see him all that much. So, with him being off all these weeks, we've gotten to spend some really good time together. And... It's been really nice and I wouldn't I wouldn't give this opportunity up for nothing so I'm thankful for that so it's like I know it's not the greatest situation of why he's home but he's here and I'm enjoying it and my kids you know they're older my kids are older and they don't always want to be home around mom and dad. So this has brought us all a little bit closer, I think. We've been able to spend more time together. and We don't do all that much, but we talk a lot. And I'm glad that my kids feel that they can talk to me. And I'm glad that we've been able to spend this time together. So, okay, now... When we come down to the end here, let me get in shot. When we get to the corners. Now this here is kind of a stretch out and I wouldn't suggest working into that. I suggest going into this first stitch here at the bottom. And you're going to put three single crochets in that spot, in that same spot. 
to form a little bit of a corner. And then you're just gonna go across the bottom here in every single chain space that you have until you get to the next corner. And then when you get down here to this corner, you're gonna put three single crochets and you're gonna go up this side. You're gonna put three single crochets up here in this corner. You're gonna go across and I'll meet you when we come to about this area and I'll show you how to finish this off because we need to put our corner on this side yet too. So go ahead and get all the way around and I'll meet you when we come up around this area. Okay, we're coming up around here. Now I have a, a couple more regular to do and then you're gonna have one stitch left that's off this color, whatever color you've used. That's where we're gonna put in our three single crochets for our corner. We're gonna put those three singles right there and then we're gonna skip our chain one and we're gonna slip stitch to that next one. Now, you can bring in the other color here but it's gonna put you at a weird spot, um, like whatever you're gonna use for the handle part. So, it's, it's up to you. You can um, add the color in here and then turn and just work this way. But I'm going to tie off here and I'm going to bring in the other color. I'm also going to go and cut some of these ends off and make it look presentable. And then we'll meet back and we will start the chop portion. Okay, I have cut off and sewed in all of my ends so now this is what we're left with now you can totally be done right here you can say you know what this is a nice towel i'm just gonna leave it like this it you can fold it in thirds and hang it like that and it'd be just as pretty um it's totally up to you i just wanted to try something different and i want to put like a small handle at the top of it but we need we need to bring some of this in first now i couldn't decide but i think i'm going to use what was actually my starting point the bottom where the three rows are i'm going to use that to bring that in um and then we're gonna bring this in dramatically on the sides here and we're going to bring it in and what i'm hoping is going to happen is it's going to pull this it's going to pull this in on its own and then we'll make the handle that way now i have decided that i'm just going to do the whole handle in my gray color and then um after we make the handle I am going to go around the whole piece one more time with this pink color. So I will have used all the colors that I used in the finishing of the part of the item. And that is what I'm going for. So I am going to add my color back on. I'm going to start over here in the corner. So you have these three single crochets here you want to start in the middle one so here's your first one here's your second here's your third so i'm going to start in the second one of those so right in the middle i'm going to slip stitch this on here and we are going to use double crochets for this part again so i'm going to chain two okay and i it's just a builder at this point i'm going to go back in and do one double crochet by itself in that first one okay now um hold on one second sorry about that i thought i heard someone calling me but i'm um, just hearing things i guess but what we're going to do now is we're going to bring two together so you're going to pull up a, a loop and pull through two you're going to yarn over and go into the next don't finish this you're going to yarn over and go into the next stitch pull up a loop you're going to pull through two, and now you've got three, you're going to pull through three. And you're going to do that all the way across. And I know it sounds dramatic, but we need it to be, because we want to pull this in. 
So we are just going to bring two together all the way across until we get to the last stitch because now we put one by itself here. So we're going to do this all the way across and then um, we're going to do, we're going to leave once uh, at the end here. Now, I think we have an odd amount of stitches, so it might not work out the way I'm trying to get it to, but um, I'm going to get across here and I'll meet you when we get towards the end and see how we have to finagle this. Okay, when you come around to this side, we're going to put two more together like that, and then we're just going to put one at the end here which is technically a stitch farther but because of the way this is made it'll it'll lay just fine and if you notice it's starting to bubble now it's starting to to pull in a little bit and this is what we want and now we're going to chain two and we are going to repeat the same exact thing we're going to start with one double crochet at the very beginning and then we're going to put two together all the way across because we need these stitches to come in for the handle but we also want it to pull in for the towel so we are just going to continue to do this across till we get it to where we want it to be so go ahead and do that and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, now when you come down to the end, you're gonna have two left to put together and you can just leave it at that now. Now you can see that it's really starting to pull in, which is going to pull the sides in is what it's gonna do so that it's laying like that. So again, we're just going to do two together all the way down. And this time we're just going to do them all. We're just going to put two together all the way across. We're not going to start with a double crochet. We're just going to pull them together all the way across. Now, one thing I want to mention is if you would like to do this part in single crochet, you totally can. Um, I just chose double crochet because I figured it would work up a little quicker for you guys since this is a bigger project. And um, I like the way it looks around this part when it pulls in better than a single crochet. So it, it's totally up to you. You can do it however you want and now when you come down here you're only gonna have one stitch left that one that we started with and we're going to just put that one in now we're down to one two three four five six seven stitches which I want to see how this is coming yeah this is perfect so now I want this handle to be a little wide because this is such a heavy towel so I'm going to leave it right here at seven stitches and I'm going to keep this a nice wide handle now if you want it to be a little skinnier you could bring it in a couple you know like do one decrease and then single crochet across and do one more decrease and it'll bring you down to five stitches um but like I said I'm going to leave this nice and and uh, chunky and I'm gonna use a bigger button I think on mine so I want it to be a little bigger anyways so now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna chain one or chain two sorry and you're just gonna work across your seven stitches oop and not go into another stitch on top here <laughs> so just put your stitches across here Make sure you don't go past your last stitch here because sometimes it can look a little weird. 
but you just want those seven stitches. You're going to chain two, you're going to turn, and you're just going to follow that across back and forth for however long you want your handle to be. I'll let you know how many I do when we meet back. But you can do it as long or as short as you want. Just leave enough room um, to add a button and be able to fold it over, basically. So let me get mine done. We'll meet back. I'll let you know how many rows I did. Okay, so I did 10 rows is what I landed on and we're going to add a buttonhole at this point. Um, we're not going to do too many rows after this. We're just going to kind of clean up the edge and then I'm going to add one more color to go around the whole thing so that we can clean up these edges too and along the, the side of this here. So um, at this point it should be laying pretty nice for you. Um, I don't know, mine at the bottom is laying weird and I'm not happy about it, but it is what it is. I get, I get super critical of my own stuff, but, um, oh, you know what? While I have a second, if you haven't already, or you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I would love that. Um, at the end of this video, if you liked what we made together. If you liked my video in general, give me a thumbs up. Um, feel free to leave any comments. If you have any questions, anything that you'd like to say, just pop a comment, let me know. And I would love for you guys to check out my Facebook, same name, Curiosity Crochet. I have a group page that you can share your projects with me. I would love that. And I'm also on Instagram, same name. Curiosity Crochet where I post all my work and if you ever see anything on there that you'd like a video for you can just Leave me a comment and I can always try to get that in for you Um, there was one other thing I was gonna mention and I don't remember what it is Oh, well, you can find both the links for the Facebook group and the Instagram at the top of my channel page Right in my header at the bottom of it there. It has the links to both of those so let's add a buttonhole. We're going to chain two again. We are going to turn it. I'm just going to turn it like this. We are going to put one, two. I'm using a big button. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches still. And we're going to put one, two. And then we're going to, we're going to uh, chain three and skip three and put two more. So we're going, now if you're gonna use a smaller button, you can do uh, like a chain two and skip two in the middle, but you'll have to do three in a row and do the two and then, and then finish off the two. If you're using a real small button, which with a towel this big, I really wouldn't, but you could just skip one in the middle and um, chain one for just a tiny hole. Another thing you could do is if you're not using a real big button, you don't even have to put a button hole on this. You could just use the spaces in between your double crochets. It'll work exactly the same. But I want to use a, a pretty large button. So I'm going to make a button hole. So we're putting two in a row. So one, two. We are going to chain three, we're going to skip three, and then we're going to put the final two double crochets at the end here. Now, I'm looking at this, and that is an awfully large hole. We are going to switch this to single crochet at this point. We're going to go back, we're going to chain one instead of two. And we're going to do single crochets from here on out. And I was going to do single crochet after the buttonhole, but yeah, I don't like that. So we're going to still do our two, chain three, skip three, and then do our last two. See, isn't it fun to crochet with somebody as they're, they're going along? See, now I got a nice buttonhole. 
so I can use a nice big button. We're going to chain one and turn and we're going to put our first two in here and then we're going to put three, one, two, three around that chain, that the chain space. And then we're going to put our last two down here at the end. We're going to chain one and turn. Just going to flip it here. And now let me take a look. We're going to go one single across this way. take a look at this so it's gonna fold front ways like this so that it can hang you know fa forward facing this way so I think that might be good we don't want to go too much extra here because then it won't lay right so if I put the button there yeah, we got plenty of room here for it to hang over something. So I think that's what we're going to end off on right there. Um, I'm actually going to bring... Oops, I just pulled this all out because it got stuck on the towel. But that's okay because I'm going to bring in my other color. Which I'm going to bring in my pink. And then I'm going to go around this whole piece one more time. So I'm going to bring in this other color. I am going to chain one. And now, just like before, I'm going to go around the whole piece with single crochets. I'm just going to evenly space out where there is no stitch around these sides here. I'm going to go all the way down the handle here. I'm going to come around here and then we'll have stitches to work into around the bottom part. Come all the way back. Now you already have corners down here so you don't have to worry about that. Just put one stitch and angle every single one. And then you'll come back up this side and you'll come around and come back up. And then when you get to this first corner here. You're going to put three single crochets in there, just like we did on the other corners. And we're going to come across, and I'll meet you when we get, like, up to this top part. And we'll finish off together. So, I'll meet you back. Okay, here we come up around, and here's the start of our top stitches. We're going to put three single crochets in there. We're going to go across the top. And just like when we finished the last time going around, we're going to come all the way to the end here. And then in our last stitch here of the different color before we get over here, we're going to put three in here. I love these hooks with all my heart. They're furls crochet hooks. But I get stuck on the yarn so much, depending on the yarn. Let's just put it that way. But see, now we have a nice clean edge at the top. Look how pretty that gray and pink looks. Okay, so now you can tie off. And if I could, oh, I dropped my scissors, guys. Anyways, we're gonna tie off. Now, at this point, you want to go through and cut off any, you know, crocheted in edges or sew in any um, edges that need to be sewed in. Um, I'm going to hold off on that, but I just wanted to show you, this is the button I'm using um, for the front of this. Now, mine's a nice big button and it's got big holes in it so I'm just going to use yarn and my darning needle and I'm going to put it 
down here so that this can come down and wrap around it you know down here so it'll be sitting like that and there's still plenty of room in there for it to go around something so that's how I'm going to finish mine off. I'm just going to add my button. You can add whatever size button you want to. I just thought this one would go really good with this. So there you have it. That's our towel. Let's see. I'll, there'll be obviously a picture on the thumbnail of it completely complete. but And it's so long. This towel is comically long. But like I said, I wanted to use up. Uh, this yarn so and if I could show you it you know but it the way we did this top it pulls it in nice so that it it lays just perfect it'll probably open up my this is heavy yarn so it's it and this is a heavy stitch so this towel is pretty heavy so it'll probably spread out at the bottom a little bit but that's okay I will take it this towel turned out really cute and the colors are so pretty. This makes for such a pretty spring, summer towel to hang in your kitchen. And it's functional. You can totally use this to dry your hands off or, you know, anything. It's totally functional. So, there you have it, my peoples. I appreciate you being here. I wouldn't keep making videos if it wasn't for the subscribers I do have. And just one more time, if you haven't already or you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I mean, you're already here, right? So let's have a party together. Let's have a crochet party together every week. So, um, and if you do subscribe, make sure you hit the notification bell right next to the subscribe button because then it'll let you know every time I upload a video. And now it'll probably be more like once or twice a week. It won't be as much as I was doing before because I'm getting back to work a little bit and then we're trying to get back to normal a little bit. But so once or twice a week, you'll have some new videos from me. So stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.